Welcome to another episode of Special Report. I'm True Powers Mine. I think I got this right. All right. <clears throat> Today, I want to uh, delve into this uh, the story about Zimbabwe. You know, it was such an epic fail taking the land away. But let's look at what were some of the outside sources of the aggravation that the Zimbabwe's had to deal with, you know, after they seized back the territory from, the, you know, the, the colonizer, okay? It's funny that, we, we, you know, I just put up this in Google uh, search engine, you know, <clears throat> Zimbabwe uh, and sanctions. You know, the, UN, the USA extends sanctions against Zimbabwe, you know. So, we have... <laughs> You know, back in 2000, uh, well, this is 2018, but uh, 2015, all right, uh, the EU imposes sanctions in 2002. So the reason why I'm pointing these out is so that you can see, hold on, where's it at? Right here. 2000, February 18, 2000. So you can see that there's, there's a cumulative effect. Once you're a small nation and you get sanctions placed on you by major powers of course your infrastructure is going to suffer you don't have all the, the manufacturing capabilities to repair you know uh, all the the machinery it takes to have a nation nowadays you know even parts for elevators if you don't have you know two and dimes and, and they they can't dial stuff in and calibrate stuff to a thousandth of an inch then you're not going to make those those parts for various machinery so therefore, you will get things like famine. We you can't get the cutter blades of the uh, combines. You can't take them off the machine, mill them out, put them back on, sharp, ready to go. If you can't do that process, of course. So, you know when you hear people like Tucker Carlson and people like Alex Jones and people like you know a lot of mainstream and so-called uh, independent media always bash Zimbabwe. You got to see. The, the fix is already in. You know, here's this country having the audacity to take back its 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 land from foreigners. And no, no, that ain't cool. You know, let's just open up this one right here. Let's let's just open that one up and see where it takes us. We, we might even get a little video. I actually will jump on YouTube as well. Um, hold on. Now this is from the Guardian. All right. Let's see. Okay. Now, the EU imposed sanctions on Zimbabwe. A European Union foreign minister today agreed to impose smart sanctions against Zimbabwe. Now, why would they have to impose any sanctions? And to withdraw the EU's election monitor still in the South African country after the head of the monitoring team was expelled from the country at the weekend. I wonder why was old boy expelled? Hmm. Now, uh, once again, uh, we cut off just 128 million euros. So that's approximately... Like two hundred and fifty-four or fifty-six million dollars, because the euros is basically two dollars or two euros to one dollar. All right, or no, it takes two dollars to make one euro. That that was the old equation, but that's subject to change. I'm just skimming through this real quick. Oh my God, you know. I just wanted to shed just a little bit of light on this, you know. I'm not going to go too far into it, but I just want to show you there is definitely a correlation between, um, well, hold on, here, let's see what he has to say. on the market this is a story you have to see it could save you thousands of yeah, dollars yeah it could everywhere else in the continent we need to start doing away with those things and pulling out of commonwealth is one of the things we need to do 
to realize a complete sovereignty for South Africa. We must not be scared to say that. We must be hated. It might not happen now, but that is the, what we're envisaging for the future of South Africa. It might not be realized in our lifetime, but those who are coming after us should know what we stood for. What beautiful words. You know, this man, you know, it's so funny. You have people, oh, let's keep these statues of Robert E. Lee. Call cease for the people. Well, here's a man standing up for his people. And they just want to tear him down. They want to destroy this man because he has the audacity to want to live free in his country. Now, I recently had a conversation with a gentleman. I can't mention his name on air because I gave him my word. And there's several people I talk to like this on a side note. Or at least chat with them, you know. Are we drinking partners? Absolutely not. Because, not that I would want to be. I would actually, definitely, I could tell this, this individual doesn't do carry on like that. He is so brilliant. Uh, this is what he talks about, what, what he's doing out there, you know. And there's something I want to leave you guys with today. And I hope this, I hope you guys really listen to this and actually follow through. Everything in your life from this day forward, look at it in terms of is it constructive to your goals and aspirations or is it destructive to your goals and aspirations for your personal life? You know, one thing about this show, I want it to have an effect on you. That you just don't watch the show and you just walk away. Well, huh? You actually think about these topics because they are all interrelated. They truly are. Now, when we talk about this issue of land reappropriation or whatnot, what scares a lot of people, especially in these United States of America, if that same type of ideology and mindset was to come over here, oh my God, you know, places like Oklahoma and... You know, unfortunately, the Nebraska's, Wyoming, you know, the, some of those lands were highly contested and treaties were broken and land was seized without compensation to the native people. And what about the Andrew Jackson Seminole Wars, where, you know, you're basically getting all the darkies out of Florida, marching them across the way in the Trail of Tears. And now... We have this situation in South Africa that is actually scaring the hell out of people. Making people terrified. Oh my god, it's a genocide, it's a genocide. Now one thing that he, I don't know if he says it, um, Julius, on this particular video. But he checks America. He's like, you know, there is no white genocide, you know, uh, in South Africa. That's pure rubbish. And then he says... There is a black genocide going on in America. You are killing black people. And that's what's so sad. It's like the whole world knows what America's up to. And yet, those of us in here, sometimes we just act like it don't even exist. But let's just hear a little bit more what he has to say. We were anti-colonial, anti-imperialist. And therefore, anything that represented imperialism and colonialism, we reject. In the same way we reject Trump, in the same way we reject Theresa May, we reject everything that represented. When we said roads must uh, uh, fall, we meant exactly that, that we need to do away with symbols that, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 represent colonialism. As we speak now, the EFF doesn't participate in the Commonwealth uh, uh, Parliament Forum. We don't. We don't. The EFF refuses to participate in uh, multinational organizations that have got close links and relations with imperialism. We refuse. We don't. So, what's he saying right there? He's letting everybody know that he and his organization do not. Uh, hold on. Let me try to. Let me try to. I hate those lines. There we go. That's a little bit better. They do not uh, 
you know, get aid or help from, you know, organizations that are obviously imperialist. No, you know, I really wouldn't expect them to say that. anything different. And our going to London, talking to business people in London, talking to business people in America, everywhere else, is not talking to imperialism. It's talking to individual potential investors. The same thing we can do in Nigeria. The same thing we can do in Kenya. We need... Uh, Alright guys, so here's the deal. Uh, no good, no good. Wow, I love the algorithm. They just... Alright guys, here's the deal. You know, they have that guy, then they throw in this Thor wannabe cat. And... Okay, whatever, man. We'll just go to a different movie, obviously. Wow, they just... Uh-oh. Hello and welcome to the Dr. Mumbi Show, a special edition for Advice Media Network. My name is Dr. Mumbi Saraki. How are you guys doing? Uh, yeah, this is a special partnership between the Dr. Mumbi Show and the Advice Media Network, Building Bridges. And you know, this... Okay. Well, I'll stop it right there. I didn't know that this was all Phil stuff. I don't have nothing against Phil. He's he's a he's a great guy, but I don't want to get any uh, copyright infringement issues. You know, I haven't really. I, I've never talked to Phil, so I don't know. You know what his opinion is on people using his stuff, but I want. To, oh man, this is a great time. Hold on, this is the website. If you guys haven't gone on there, YouTube. You guys need to come here to here. Brothers Ron site. We all be TV. This brother has some of the best straight up videos around. Alright. We all be TV. It's really it's really that simple. And you know what, while I'm actually here, there's another gentleman, I think. You'll probably be good to, to watch from time to time, just to get an overall sense of things. Uh, doctor. Yes, I'm a Doctor Who fan. I watch Doctor Who. Okay, whatever. But uh, this gentleman here, uh, I, I, I believe a lot of his videos are on victory of our uh, WS, okay? Uh, that's like the main channel so definitely subscribe to them and to we all be TV as well and obviously you know without saying Dimebag TV and True Powers my YouTube you know uh, support 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 but hold on I want to give well, you guys some people have been asking me what they can do to help me to do what I'm trying to do a number of people have done that uh, I've received emails and phone calls, etc. And so, uh, to try to be as uh, concise and explicit as possible, I think uh, I said that since people have asked me this, I try to keep it simple and straight to the point. And number one would be, if a person wants to help me to do what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to solve the race problem. So, anything along that line. So I say, number one, would think, speak, and act to solve problems in the most constructive manner. And then by do just doing that every day. I mean, you're not only helping me, you're helping to do what I'm trying to do, which is solve the race problem. That, that should be the objective. It's not a matter of focusing on helping Neely Fuller. It's a matter of what is it that Neely Fuller is supposed to be trying to do. He's trying to solve the greatest problem on the planet, which everybody on the planet should be trying to do. Why? Because it's the greatest problem on the planet. So the best way to go about doing that for everybody, white, non-white, male, female, old, young, whomever, is to think, speak, and act to solve problems, including the race problem, and to do so in the most constructive manner. And try to figure out ways to do that each and every day, each and every minute of each and every day. Because 
that war is still going on. So that would be the number one. Number two, what I do is ask people, because I do have a book, I ask people since they say they try to help me, ask people to study the book that I have written. Yes, and, and I'm, I didn't mean to interject here, but I don't want anyone to be like, oh, he's just plagiarizing. Listen, this man here, brilliant mind, brilliant mind, super awesome human being. Um, one thing I will say, we have to start looking at this thing that we're dealing with totally differently. We have to and visualize ourselves being prisoners and acting accordingly to actually get out of this thing that we find ourselves in. All right. Study the book, The Counter Racist Code. That's it. If they want to help me directly, help Neely Miller directly do what he's trying to do. But the number one thing is just try to solve everyday problems that you look at right around you every day. I mean, without consulting Neely Poole on anything, except you can read his book to help you solve the problems. That's why I wrote the book. So you can go and get the book if you don't have it, and study it, and use the things that you can use to help solve problems. It 110% I have to agree. All right, guys. I mean, I know these videos are awesome. Uh, they're very insightful, very informative. But nothing can replace you picking up the book and actually turning the pages and reading what's inside of various books. I mean, there's been a lot of books that I've, you know, kind of promoted on the show. You know, Jacqueline Badalora's book, Jane Elliott's book, John Lear's book. Um, I wish Mark for Anaheim wrote a book, but I definitely promote his, his Facebook page. You know, and, and, and he does have a lot of written material. It's just not all compiled in book form, but it's very informative. And the next show, we're probably going to go through a few articles from Mark and actually start breaking them down and seeing where we're at with this. All right. But everything moving forward, we have to look at it. Is it going to be constructive or is it going to be destructive? And on that, I leave you guys. This has been a special report. I'm True Powers Mind. Thank you all for watching.